Well, good morning, C++ fans. Uh, what we're going to do today is look at sorting. And this is in reference to your uh, programming assignment that's going to have you do a Hamming sort. Now, I'm not going to write the Hamming sort for you. I'll write a bubble sort for you and show you how that works. And you follow the algorithm that is in the um, assignment write-up and uh, translate the Hamming code into C++ code. Well, let's get started. And we're going to show you a few other things in this assignment uh, that will come in handy, not just here, but later on. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create an array that we're going to sort. Now, I'm just going to hard code the values in here so that uh, we don't have to read in an array. And it's just going to make it a little bit easier to write the code up. And uh, I'm going to uh, put in some numbers. We got uh, declared an integer uh, number array here and we're going to put in some values. I'm not going to tell you or predefine how many are in. I'm just going to enter in a bunch of them um, that I've uh, tested already. And 34 and 56 and 45, 32, 34, 89, 63, 59 prime number and 73 it's when I graduated high school 22 44 66 100 and then our final number which is really nothing zero put a semicolon right there and we will look that looks like it's going to compile okay let's make the screen just a little bit wider all right there we go okay so there's our integer array good if you want, you can go ahead and compile it just at this time, just to make sure there are no um, um, errors in the code. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we've got to have something that tells us how big the array is. When you're reading in the array, you can do this a couple of ways. Uh, the most logical way is to count the numbers as they come in. So as you come in, you have a little counter that you add one to every time you read a number in. Uh, here I'm going to show you a technique that uh, we look at the uh, size of the array. Now I'm just going to call this size of array. This is not a function, it's just a variable I'm going to declare. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to use a function called size of. And I'm going to look at number array, which is the array uh, we just looked at. Uh, the one previously. Now what size of does is it looks at that structure, it looks at numbers array and it looks to see how many bytes of storage are actually allocated for that particular thing. It's going to look at it and it's going to say ah oh, there's uh, 68 bytes or something like that. But there are not 68 things, there's less than that. But there are four bytes for everything. Each number up there occupies four bytes. So if I take the number that I get there and I divide it by 4, all right, then I should have the size of that array. It's just a technique that we use uh, whenever we're uh, uh, writing code. All right. Note here, uh, this is not something I normally would expect you to use in the assignment. It's just uh, another technique of C++ I'd like to illustrate. Uh, get size of returns us the number of bytes allocated for something. All right, now I'm going to sort the list uh, I've declared up there, number I'm going to sort it, and I'm going to sort it using a very standard bubble sort. And I'm going to write a couple of functions. I'm going to go ahead and call those functions before I write them. This also is a very common thing to do, is to write the main routine and then fill in the pieces later on. So I'm going to say, I'm going to do a B sort, which is a bubble sort, and I have to pass in the uh, array itself and then I also have to pass in the uh, side to tell how big it is, how many numbers to actually sort. Now you'll notice right there it says B sorts not defined. Well let's go up and define it now and I'm going to do the uh, prototype. Void B sort and I'm going to say it's a uh, integer uh, we'll call it uh, n We'll call it an array. We'll put those red tails of the array. Now we have to pass this in by reference. An array is my reference. And we're going to pass in a constant integer, which we'll call S for size. Okay. And I'm going to make that int so it doesn't compile right. All right. Very good. Now you'll notice that, uh, let me change the names. 
Very good. All right. Now I'm going to write another routine. And that routine I'm going to write is called print array. It also does not exist. This one I'm going to pass in number array also and a size of array. Now it says, well, it doesn't exist either. Let's go ahead and write that prototype. Okay. And we're going to say void print array. Now we're going to pass in a constant int. All right. Uh, we don't want to change it. So anytime we don't change something, we put the word const in front of it, meaning constant. Const int s. So now we have our two prototypes defined. Let's go down and write them. I'm not going to write them completely. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to write what's called a stub. This is the methodology I want you to write, follow whenever you're uh, writing these programs. Write a piece of them at a time, test the calls, test the declarations before you actually start writing the code. Um, all of you, almost without exception, um, write too much code without testing it. And, and in fact, I would have expected a lot of you to actually um, test this code before you uh, you went on. I'm just uh, I've written this a couple times already, so I kind of know what I'm doing. So let's write the B sort. And all I'm going to do in the B sort is well, let me go up here and just follow my directions. I'm going to copy this. This is the best way to do it. I'm going to paste it here. I am going to um, take out the semicolon, replace it with a left and right bracket, and I'm just going to so right here. I'm going to say C out. <sighs> Call the bubble sort, and then in that statement. All right. I'm going to do the same thing now with. Uh, let's see out using these base standard C out oh, bubble sort. Let me go up here and copy print array. Copy that. Come down here. Put it right after that. Print array. Take off the semicolon. Left right paren. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to say C out. called the print array function. Two different ways to do a carriage return. Alright, now here I'll go ahead and save it. Everything looks good. Yeah, it looks very good. Alright, let me go up here and uh, build it. Alright, let me debug, let me run it, and all I'm doing here is I'm testing to see, it says, okay, called the bubble sort, called the print array. Very good. So my calls work. In other words, uh, oops, my calls work. So now I can go in and I can start filling in the details. Well, the first one I write, uh, it's almost always the case, the first one I write is the simplest one gives me practice writing code and, and make sure everything's work okay. The other reason I write the print array first is because I, I like to see the results of the data. I want to see what the data looks like. So it just is a natural thing to write the print array first before I write the bubble sort. The bubble sort is going to be more complex. So let me go down and write the print array. What I want to do is I want to go through the array contents and I want to print them out to the screen. Okay, So that's usually a for loop. So for int index equals zero. All arrays start at zero. While well, index is less than s, which is the size of it, index plus plus. I want to add one to index. Okay. Here I'm going to see out the array subscripted by index. And I will um, um, let me go up and, and just include some uh, formatting with this too. Let me just go ahead and I'll include uh, IO manip with that. So down here I'll say set width of we'll say four. Alright. Very good. 
and then we'll end that. And we'll print out every four spaces, we'll print out a number, and we'll just uh, print them all out on one line and let it wrap around. Let's save this. Let's build it. And you notice I save it quite a bit. This is always a very good thing to do because let's say that your computer crashes uh, in the middle of something or it stops working Windows. It does this all the time. Uh, if you save the product every so often, you've got the most recent version out there. If you make a habit of not saving it, uh, it's working with a temporary copy and the temporary copy is never recoverable. So saving it always uh, is a good thing to do. Let's run debug okay start without debugging alright so there it is very good now then this is uh, part one of the uh, bubble sort and we're stopping at about 11 minutes but uh, uh, go on to part two to actually see how we write the bubble sort itself play this one over as many times as you need to actually to get a feel for it very good well uh, bubble bubble sort part two coming up next